So here in part A we have an integration. We're asked to integrate the expression 3 cos 2x plus 1. And we'll do that by integrating each of the two terms that are added together. We'll integrate first 3 cos 2x and then integrate 1. So let's remind ourselves what happens when we integrate cos x. We end up with sine x plus a constant. Remember you can always check backwards that the opposite of integrating an inverse process of in integrating is differentiating. So if we differentiate back, we differentiate sine x, we get cos x. If there's a 2x instead of just a plain x, then again we'll get the sine of 2x, but because of this 2 that's sitting there, a factor of 2, we divide by 2. If you differentiate back, sine 2x differentiated will give you cos 2x times what you get when you differentiate the 2x. That's the chain rule. So there'll be an extra times 2, which cancels with this 2. So we're almost there. A 3 at the front of the proceedings, 3 times cos 2x, will just be 3 times the answer we would have get, got anyway. So it's 3 times sine 2x over 2. So there's our first term integrated. Then if we integrate 1, what is it that we differentiate to get back 1? Well, if we differentiate x plus a constant, graph of y equals x, remember that's a straight line, you differentiate the gradient of y equals x is just 1. So when we integrate 1, we get x, plus a constant, of course. So let's move on now to part b. And it's a trig identity that we've to solve. We have to show that 3 cos 2x plus 1 is the same as 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x. Now there's lots of ways of doing this. So let's start taking the left hand side, which is 3 cos 2x plus 1, and see what we can do with that. Now on your formula sheet you have the three different versions of cos 2x. One of them is cos squared x minus sine squared x. Another version is 2 cos squared x minus 1. And a third one is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we basically have a choice. Replacing cos 2x, if we look at the right hand side, we've got cos squareds and sine squareds appearing. The first version up here is the one that has cos squareds and sine squareds. So it would be natural to replace cos 2x by cos squared x minus sine squared x. But of course, that doesn't help us with this plus 1. There is no constant appearing over here. So we have to do something about this one to get rid of it. Now if you recall that there is a trig relationship that says sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So it might be worth taking this 1 and replacing it by sine squared x plus cos squared x. At least now all the terms involve sine squared x and cos squared x. So there's a good chance that we might end up with this right hand side. So first of all, let's multiply out the first bracket. So we have 3 lots of cos squared x minus 3 lots of sine squared x. And to that, we have to add a sine squared x and a cos squared x. So let's gather up the cos squared terms. There's 3 of them here, plus another one here. That's 4 cos squared x minus 3 sine squared x plus 1 sine squared x would be minus 2 sine squared x. And that indeed is the right hand side of that 
identity. So we've solved it. So that's one possibility. Let's look at another possibility with this left-hand side. Where we say to ourselves, well, really this time focusing on this one and noticing that there's a minus one which would cancel it if we use this version of cos 2x. However, there's only one cos 2x as opposed to three of them. So what we could do is leave two of these and separate the third one from it. So if we've got two lots of cos 2x and another one would give you these three cos 2x's and that allows us the luxury of replacing that cos 2x by 2 cos squared x minus 1 which would therefore get rid of the offending plus 1. Now, the only problem now is we do have cos squared terms. Um, we've got a cos 2x. Um, we certainly don't want to bring back in constants minus ones or ones. So presumably we would then now use the cos squared x minus sine squared x version to replace cos 2x in there. And that'll leave us nothing but cos squared x's and sine squared x's. If we multiply that out, and we see that we can gather the 2 cos squared x and another 2 cos squared x to get our 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x, which is the right hand side. So there's a, a slightly different method of doing it. Finally, let's just look at one last way that we could do this, and that starts with the, the right-hand side of this identity, where we're looking at 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x. And I'm looking up at these two versions of cos 2x, where we have a 2 cos squared x, which if we add one to both sides, we would get 2 cos squared x being cos 2x plus 1. Cos 2x plus 1, 2 cos squared x plus 1 onto this minus 1 and that disappears. So there's a version where 2 cos squared x is the same as cos 2x plus 1. And we have a 4 cos squared x, so let's just double uh, the 2 cos squared x, and we'd have to double the right hand side here. Um, so we'd end up with 4 cos squared x being able to be replaced by 2 cos 2x plus 2. And let's have a look at minus 2 sine squared x. Well, there is minus 2 sine squared x. If I take 1 from both sides, uh, we'd get cos 2x minus 1 being exactly the same as minus 2 sine squared x. So the minus 2 sine squared x here can get replaced by cos 2x minus 1. So let's do all these replacements. 4 cos squared x is identical to 2 cos 2x plus 2, and the minus 2 sine squared x is the same as cos 2x minus 1. And let's see what we've got. We've got two lots of cos 2x plus cos 2x. That's three lots of cos 2x. And 2 minus 1 gives us plus 1. And that's identical to the left hand side. So we're done. So that's a a demonstration of the variety of different ways that these trig equations can be solved. I think this is one of the examples of creativity when you're solving these things. It's nice to be able to mould these equations and be quite creative about how you solve these trig equations. It's all great fun. So let's move on to part C. So in this part we're asked to find the integral 
of sine squared x minus 2 cos squared x. And the word hence implies that we could use what we've used before to prove this. 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x appears to be double what we have here. Let's, let's take this negative 2 cos squared x and write it as minus 4 cos squared x plus instead of 1 sine, let's do 2. We can't just double something, of course. Uh, that changes it. We would have to then half what we have. So if we double this, then half it, we're back to where we were. But you can certainly see that this is beginning to look a bit like what we proved in part B. The only difficulty is the opposite sign. So I think if we change the signs of these to get a positive cos squared x and a minus 2 sine squared x, and if, again, we can't just change the sign of this without balancing it out. So we would put a negative in front of this. And check that out by multiplying. Negative a half of 4 is negative 2 cos squared x, which is what we've got given there. And negative a half times the negative 2 is positive 1 lot of sine squared x is, is what we have here. So this integral here is identical to the one I started with. And we're now able to replace 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x by 3 cos 2x plus 1, because that's what the trig identity was that we proved in part b. So let's do that replacement. And then what has this got to do with part a? Well, that's exactly the integral that we showed was equal to 3 sine 2x over 2 plus x plus c in part a, except we now have a negative half in front of it. So negative a half times 3 sine 2x over 2 plus x, and then, of course, the whole thing will be plus a constant. So we've now got negative 3 sine 2x over 4, 2 2's are 4, they're in the bottom of the fraction, plus, no sorry, minus, negative a half times x, negative a half x, and then plus a constant. So there's the final result for that integration.